everyone welcome back to my channel this is our year to shine and I've decided that I'm gonna say that from now on because even if you didn't pick the word shine for 2021 it just feels way more natural to me to say that this is our year to shine just like last year was our simple abundance year so I'm going to be saying that because every time I've done another video this year I've just tripped over how to say it so welcome to our year to shine. I'm Carolyn and I have my kitty co-host Annabelle here nearby. That's my kitty. Tonight I'm going to introduce a little more about the book that I mentioned recently called Enough. I've had a chance to go through a lot of it and I think there'll be a lot of good topics to bring to the channel. And obviously when you think about the word enough in terms of do I have enough? Am I enough? Things like that. But is, in terms of like, is there enough? When we're thinking about resources in the world, it, just the way that our human culture is now, where things have value and ownership, it is easy to see how we can get into what the author, and I said her name wrong last time, it's Lori McCammon. I sort of said McMannon, so McCammon. Um, it's easy to see why she shares with us that she calls it the not enoughness. That sort of belief in our, like, as a human is so natural because if you see that there's a certain amount of resources and that you might not have access to them, then of course you're going to be, there's going to be a, an equation. It's going to feel like there may not be enough to go around or I may not have enough to pay for that or somebody else might get more than I get. So I'm going to talk about two things today because in a lot of the beginning of the book is really her explaining how she came to this decision to write a book about the topic and a lot of it was really divinely inspired it's pretty interesting I'm not going to go into great depths but two things that I really thought were uh, of value to bring to the first the first topic and why did I not have it on the book 21. Uh, on page 21, she asks us, is scarcity real? So what I just said about the fact that like we learn that there's only a certain amount of resources because that's the way it is. But I was thinking back to a video I did last year during our Simple Abundance Year where I said something about how it is amazing how our world is set up. There's so much regeneration. You can put a tiny little seed in the ground and, and have food. And, and somehow even like the farming industry has become something where there's, it, like just because we live in this society, I mean, it's a whole worldwide thing. And Laurie feels like one of her missions is to somehow create a new world where there isn't that. And I have to say, I find that part, and we haven't gotten to that chapter, there's a whole thing at the end about we are enough. I don't know if I'm on board with <laughs> changing the structure of society, but I can see her points on that. So when she asks, is scarcity real? Then you might say, like, one of the things she says is, like, there's evidence. So, yeah, of course it's real. Like, and that might be something if you just were asked, is scarcity real? You would be like, yeah, well, I saw a guy with a sign today, and he was asking for money, and, you know, I have more than my neighbor does, or I don't live in a mansion than my neighbor does, <laughs> you know? Um, so... She does mention what I just said about how the fact there we live in an amazing world. Like you could live out in the mountains somewhere. I mean, again, because land is something that we own as well, that can sometimes be difficult also. But 
there are people that live without money and they just grow their own crop, crops and I mean think about the Native Americans that were here and how the when the the English invaders came over it was like they they couldn't even imagine that there would be people I know there was trading and stuff like that but they couldn't imagine that they were just sort of living as they like just having what they needed and sort of transient in some respects they might have moved somewhere else for a certain season so I'm gonna read some of Lori's words the story of humanity is one of extreme interest in which the ecosystem is seen as a resource to be exploited and used up. Yeah. Human beings have operated for 5,000 years as disruptors of natural self-perpetuating systems, among other things, clear-cutting what once were complex, diverse, self-sustaining ecosystems and replacing them, replacing them with a heavily sprayed and watered monocrop plots that deplete the soil and lead to erosion you know so she's going on about kind of like how the farming industry or think about like the fishing industry where it's like everything is done in such mass amounts that it has really messed up our world in a lot of ways if scarcity in similar degrees is not observable in under in undisturbed ecosystems and it's not so like if we discovered another part of the earth that nobody had ever known was there, it would still be going on its own, right? It would be like the things would be coming up again in the spring and they'd go to sleep in the winter and if it was a climate like that, but animals would keep reproducing. I mean, it is pretty amazing that left untouched and not owned or controlled there really isn't scarcity it's only our human culture and way of living that's really created that do you ever think about that before yeah it's a the result of choices made by hand, humankind in choosing to put our faith in practices such as clear cutting overfishing monocrop farming, heavy, heavy pesticides, mountaintop removal. She goes on and on with a big list of things. They, they are creating a, what she's sort of calling like a dead zone. These conditions of scarcity have been used to perpetuate further belief in scarcity until scarcity is all we see and expect. And she's talking about her and her colleagues who are on this enoughness journey. What we're discovering as we confront the culture of scarcity to its, score, its source is that the fulcrum of change is actually not outside of all of us, but it's within us. Paradigms are collective agreements about how to perceive the world. Human agreements are revised all the time as we learn something new. That's true. Critical number of us are now recognizing that something is very wrong with our current paradigm. The story we've been telling ourselves has become a dangerous one. Our hearts, which can never completely lose our connection to nature, know a better one. Equality is natural. Kindness and respect for the living are natural. Enough for all is natural. Scarcity is not. So what do you think? It's an interesting thought. Does scarcity exist? Well, yes it does, but is it real? Or is it created by a perception and, experience, and an experience that we have? I've talked a bit about money on the channel and how a lot of it in, in, in the addition to behavior, but a lot of it can be about an attitude or a feeling as well. So, and Sarah told us about that too in our Simple Abundance year last year, where she talked about how she always had a $100 bill with her. 
and it just sort of it was like this feeling of like knowing she had it knowing she, she could spend it and it almost being like a little magnet to bringing more so some of it is in your mind as well nature doesn't accumulate debts either she tells us Nature is about sustaining balance, equal exchange, sharing, participation, and co-responsibility. Ultimately, nature is about how to minimize suffering and maximize well-being. So, in relationship to that, do you, you would sort of think, it might be something that you think right now, that having things equates to being happier. So like if you're living in a situation where you feel like there's scarcity, that you're gonna be unhappy because you're just gonna be always in lack. And that's possible. But she does tell us in later in, in the beginning of the book, chapter, or sorry, page 34, in a, a discussion about what creates happiness. I like this one because I've heard of this before the happiness index are you guys familiar with that there was a 2011 I think documentary just called happy and I watched it and it's along these lines of the happiness index is I'm sorry the happy planet index I said it wrong uh, it's sponsored by the new economics foundation so they did this whole study on the world and actually if you look it up online it's so depressing because I just double checked it tonight and America has the lowest it's like it's like there's different colors and America has the lowest happiness index and so what the happiness index found was that people in places where you would sort of think that there was a feeling of scarcity or simplicity or just not having enough they were actually happier than say more quote-unquote modern and established civilizations it found the majority of happiness countries were located in less prop prosperous areas none of which were top scoring in in another study as far as like success and when you think about success and happiness, as I mentioned last year that I wrote an obituary for myself, it was like my ideal obituary, not necessarily like one that could be published tomorrow because I was kind of writing, you know, what I would like to be remembered by, remembered for, and you know, maybe there was like a wing of a school named after me or something like that. Um, but, Oh, I lost my train of thought as far as saying, oh, I was just going to say that when you die, you don't have your things anymore. So scarcity is not even, or enough, enoughness is like, well, enoughness, you hope that you feel like you have enough as far as like that you've been enough in this life when you go. But as far as the enoughness of resources or belongings, that's not what matters in the end. I would say I'd rather live somewhere where the happiness planet index is better. So where you think like, oh, I could never be a fisherman in that little town. Those people in this whole thing, they were just happier. And you know what it was? So what creates happiness? It's not things, right? It's connections, it's people. Yeah, it's love. Life's inevitable challenges when they motivate us to cultivate more connection. Sometimes if you're in a challenging situation where you're trying to overcome uh, not having enough resources or whatever, then you do come, become more connected. And it's like a together, together we rise. <laughs> yeah, one for all and all for one. <laughs> I was going to read something else, though. Yeah, so it doesn't have anything to do with financial prosperity. 
Creating community is what happens in the process of solving problems together in more conscious and connected ways. We enrich our well-being as we enrich the lives of our neighbors. We heal ourselves as we work to heal the planet. When we help others to have their enough, the chance of feeling our own enoughness is enhanced. Yeah, so that would be something similar to the law of attraction. And if you don't know what that is, you can look up Abraham Hicks and the law of attraction. And actually, also, I mentioned conversations with God. So Neil Donald Walsh talks about this as well. It's like, if you want something, then giving that away to someone else, really, it's, it's a vibrational sort of thing, an energetic thing. It's like a boomerang. Because when you, like just what she said here, when you help others to have their enough, the chance of feeling our own enoughness is enhanced. So, and that's not necessarily like in terms of resources. It could be encouraging a friend that, that they are worthy of love and happiness and getting a better job or whatever it is. And so when you are giving back and creating those community feelings and working together, then it comes back around. Let me know what you think about that. Has that been your experience? I've mentioned those sorts of concepts a lot on the channel in the last year. So, so far, I think there's gonna be a lot to talk about in this book. There's just various little entries so far. I've looked ahead. I'm really more interested in the I'm enough section and I started looking through, I mentioned that there's a workbook, so I started looking through the workbook and there's a lot of neat activities. Like I could see this book being for a women's group, you know, where it could even probably be like a year long program. I'm not gonna spend a year on it, although I probably could have done like a year project on this book, but I'll, I will go through some of the things. I've already made a few notes as I've been going through. Like if there's a topic that seems like it would be good to discuss, then I will come on and do a video. How's your year going so far, by the way? It's already been eventful, at least in the United States so far. <laughs> Never a dull moment. I hope you're, you're keeping your balance. I had to turn the TV off yesterday myself because I, I just have shared with you before I can get really affected by things like that. So I hope you are staying as peaceful as you can right now and working on your self-care. You're working on your extreme self-care challenge for January and also getting your journal put together, picking your word. I've only seen, I think, one one or two people say what their words are. So definitely tell me what you ch chose for a word if you chose one. And maybe let me know if there's any other projects you're working on so far. Thank you for being here on the channel. We'll continue on with more of our talk about enough. I think it's going to be very well aligned with simple abundance because there's a lot of crossover in terms of putting yourself at the basis of things and like I am enough to create this self-care plan for myself or my put my schedule you know schedule in time off or going to get a massage or things like that so there's a bit about that and I think that the whole scarcity topic and money and food and other things is an interesting part of the enoughness as well so Stick around, there'll be more to talk about, and definitely leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Have a good one, and I will talk to you on the next video. Bye-bye.